What's up, Bulldogs? Today we're going to be talking about OMAD and metabolic slowdown and efficiency. This is one of the things that I think most people that talk about OMAD and one meal a day don't really address. And any kind of fasting is going to result in some amount of metabolic slowdown. I've been doing this for four years, so I've got a lot of experience and I can tell you that uh, what's happened to me, uh, you're going to want to stay tuned to the end of the video to find out here. I'm John Sonmez from BulldogMindset.com and if you're just joining me for the first time on this channel we talk about going from the victim mindset to the bulldog mindset. In this video we're going to be talking about metabolic slowdown in OMAD. This is part of the OMAD or one meal a day series. I'm 6'3", I'm about 220-ish pounds, okay? I run 50 to 60 miles a week, do kickboxing, uh, Muay Thai three times a week and I lift three times a week for two hour sessions. So I do a lot of physical exercise, okay? I eat one meal a day, okay? Oh, mad, all right? Uh, sometimes I eat one meal every two days and go ahead and fast for 48 hours. Uh, I do usually do that at least once a week, sometimes twice a week. You can tell from looking at me, all right, I am not dying, I'm not starving, I'm not anorexic, okay? I, in fact, I still have some fat on me, okay? I'm not even as lean as I could be. I'm not ready to walk on the stage. What's going on here? How could this be possible? A lot of people, you know, post, you know, message me on Instagram. By the way, follow me on Instagram if you haven't already, Bulldog Mindset. And they'll DM me and they'll be like, dude, what do you eat? Like, you must eat like a feast every night. You must eat like 4,000 calories like Blake from, you know, Blake diet or whatever. Not true at all, okay? A lot of times, if you look at my, my food, it is gonna be stuff like Chipotle, okay? Like, like, and when I say Chipotle, I mean a bowl with, uh, with like a little bit of rice and some beans and like double or triple chicken and no cheese, right? <laughs> it's pretty damn clean. And then some oatmeal, right? And then like, you know, pretty damn clean foods, right? It might be like freshy, something like that. Again, pretty damn clean and low calorie foods. That's typically what I'm eating. How is this possible then that I am, you know, sustaining my weight? Am I breatharian? Okay. Am I, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm going to kickboxing. I'm doing all this stuff. I'm doing all this stuff fasted, right? What is going on? I'm still eating a decent amount of calories. So I might be eating like two or 3000 calories a day, but according to, you know, everything, I should be burning probably four to 5,000 calories a day, right? Like when I go on a 10 mile run, that's, you know, that's a good like 12, 1300 calories just on the run itself. What's happening is actually my metabolism is slowing down. And here's the thing that a lot of people don't understand about metabolic slowdown. Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? Well, it's a good thing. Why? because what it means is that your body's becoming more efficient at using the fuel, right? So if you had a car, okay, and the car got 10 miles per gallon, all right, versus another car that got 60 miles per gallon, which car is better? Because we have to pay for gasoline and it's expensive, we know that the car that makes that gets 60 miles per gallon is better, it's more efficient, okay? It, it's going to uh, be a lot more efficient. It, it's, it's more desirable in that way. That's a much more desirable attribute. Yet, when it comes to diet and nutrition, right, so many of us are like, we're afraid, uh, we think that it's better to have a metabolism like a truck, a pickup truck that gets 10 miles per gallon rather than uh, an eco-friendly car that gets 60 miles per gallon, okay? Why do we think that? Well, because most of us want to lose weight. We want to be able to eat as much as we can. We want to have high metabolism so we can eat a lot of food, okay, and not gain weight or we can even lose weight. Now, even though we want to do that, that doesn't mean that's the most healthy and the best thing for us, right? The fast the faster you burn through fuel, the less efficient you are, uh, the, the less that that system is going to work. It's going to be more tax. The more food you put through the system, the more gasoline you put through the engine, okay, the, the faster that you're going to tax and utilize that engine, all right? If you think about it, this is how I kind of think about life and, and health and nutrition. Our hearts have a finite number of beats before they're going to like be done, all right? <laughs> and so, if you train as an athlete and you reduce your resting heart rate, right, you train hard and increase your heart rate for short periods of time, but overall you reduce your heart rate for a majority of the time, you're saving ticks. Does that make sense? 
okay? You're gonna live longer. Same thing with your digestive system and your body processing energy, right? If you eat a lot of calories, okay, and you know, you put a lot of calories through your system, okay, you are expending a lot of energy. You're, you're, you're taxing that system, you're utilizing that system, you're utilizing that engine, okay? And the more that you utilize that engine, the, the, the more, the less uh, life. It's only got so much life in it, okay? Now, I'm not saying this from just some bullshit, okay? There's a lot of medical science and facts that back this up. In fact, one of the things that you can look up here is look up the studies that they've done on longevity. The only thing that's ever been shown to increase longevity, uh, you know, scientifically in mammals is long-term caloric restriction, which reduces the metabolism quite a bit. Now, why does this happen? Yes, a lot of people are gonna say a certain function shut down, right? And that's true, right? If you are on an extremely restricted calorie diet, some things will shut down in the body. But I think I could say, as an athlete who runs marathons, okay, who does kickboxing, who does hardcore training and lifts weights and keeps muscle mass naturally, right? I'm not on any gear or any kind of shit like that, all right? I can say that I'm running pretty fucking efficiently right for a slow metabolism you, you see what i'm saying like my systems are not shutting down okay my muscle growth my protein synthesis is still there although i'm not going to probably gain a lot of muscle on this you know granted all right but you know i'm able to run i'm able to sprint i'm able to do long distance okay i'm able to do kickboxing so i've, I've got everything that is there that, that's supposed to be there the first thing you need to know is that if you're on omad which is a form of fasting caloric restriction your metabolism is probably going to slow down when i first started doing omad the first year or so i lost a ton of weight i was able to eat a lot more food and and still uh, still lose weight okay but as i've been on it for now for basically four years the amount of food that i can eat even in that one meal is much less okay in some ways that sucks because obviously i'd like to eat more food but in other ways it's good because my metabolism is becoming more efficient from an aging perspective this is great i feel like since i started doing nomad that my basically my age has kind of frozen right i mean obviously i'm still aging and it's true but i i look very much like i did when you know, when I started this, okay, my, my aging has kind of slowed down. That, that process has slowed down, which makes sense because why? Because I'm not running as much fuel through the system, right? I'm, I'm not taxing it as much, right? If you drive a car 100,000 miles a year, okay, versus you drive a car 10,000 miles a year, which one's going to have more wear and tear and which one's going to show more aging on the car? Obviously, the 100,000 miles a year. As you're doing this, it's going to stop being as effective as, as you want it to be for fat loss. It'll still work, obviously. Calorie deficit will still work, but your deficit may have to be greater, okay? Which is fine because you'll adjust to it. So you need to understand this if you're getting stuck. If you've been doing OMAD for a while, one meal a day for a while, you're going to find this to be true. But the second reason why I'm saying this is because it's not metabolic damage, that, I don't know who, what kind of bullshit term metabolic damage, it's metabolic efficiency. Your body, especially when you've been fasting a lot, has now optimized things, right? It has gotten rid of the bad cells. It has made itself more efficient at utilizing that energy. It's like a car that gets more miles per gallon, okay? Now again, like I said, you might not like that, but it's a good thing. It means from a health-wise perspective, right, that your your longevity is increased, your aging is decreased, right? Uh, technically, you know, you're able to do more on less fuel, which is a really good thing. So th these are all good things. And again, you can bring your metabolism back up. You can do reverse dieting and all this stuff if you want to. That's that's fine, okay? But arguably, like, it's it's not a bad thing to have your metabolism slow down. Okay, everyone else try, tries to say that, and I don't understand why they say that. Just because it's something we don't want to happen doesn't mean that it's not that that's a bad thing, right? Every single study that we we look at in animals, where we look at long-term calorie restriction, says this is a good thing. Says this is a good thing for lifespan, uh, for increasing lifespan, for expectancy, for efficiency, all of these things. So I'll talk to you next time. Take care.